Lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club. Now, our book club choice uh, for this month is A Week in Winter by Maeve Binchy, which was penned by the much-loved author just before her death. Uh, this morning, we're going to be discussing a legacy with two successful Irish writers, Sheila O'Flanagan and Sinead Moriarty. Both authors were inspired by Maeve and will be taking part in an event to remember her this Saturday as part of the Dublin Book Festival. Before we hear from them, let's first take a look at a 2008 interview with Maeve on Ireland AM in which she describes her joy at the success of other female Irish authors. Do you know, it's very pleasing to go into a shop now and see all the, the, sh the, the books by Irish women. I'm, I, it's not that I am so supremely confident that I'm not jealous. It's not a question of that. It's a question of, I once heard somebody say, and it was such a good remark, that success is not like a cake and that if I take a slice, then there's less left for you. Success is like a cairn or a heap of stones and that if the, the, when one person has a success, another person has one and it builds it up and that cairn or heap of stones is seen by everybody. And so when I was a child, there was no, there were no writers in Ireland. There was Kate O'Brien, there was Mary Lavin and Edna O'Brien suddenly came in like a great beacon and that was all there were in terms of the women writers around. Now you literally could have whole departments of a, of a new bookstore would be for them and I am really pleased to see this and I am not jealous of these people because there's enough for us all. The wonderful May Binchy. Good morning ladies. You're both very welcome. Tell us about, you, you, you're doing something special this weekend so w which one of you wants to tell us about that? Um. Go ahead, Sinead. Okay. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Sheila, myself and Patricia Scanlon are doing a talk um, about Maeve and her influence on uh, Irish women writers, and writers generally, on Saturday um, in Smock Alley at one o'clock. It's part of the Dublin Book Festival, and I suppose really it's a celebration of her life mm -hmm. and how she certainly influenced us, and I think pretty much any writer that I've met along the way. Well, there's the lineage right there. There's Maeve, there's Patricia, mm -hmm. and then there's Yee. But, I mean, that's the generation. I mean, it literally is like that, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's like the baton has been handed on. Yeah, I, I mean, I think um, Maeve put it really well there where she was talking about the, the stone and the current of stones and, you know, you have one stone and then another and another and people, people see that it is possible to write books about Ireland and Irish women and be successful and that encourages other, other women to do the same thing. And um, at this stage, like, that, that mound of stones is actually quite high and that's fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Sinead, that was one of the, the points that you made actually about, about Maeve, was that she was one of the first people that showed us that we, you don't have to set your books in New York or Tokyo or yeah. somewhere exotic, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was, I suppose, you know, sometimes people think that you have to write these incredible books um, with a lot of drama and set in different cities. And she showed that a beautiful story set in, in a small village is a universal theme and that, you know, her books were successful globally. And she was the first person, certainly for me when I was growing up, that I saw being successful on such a, such a global scale yeah. with just a beautiful story, you know. And so you, so you kind of thought, OK, well, you know, maybe I could write a book. And so it was very, very inspirational. And I always just thought that she handled her success with such grace and such charm. You know, I just thought she was an amazing role model. She's a real generosity of spirit, didn't she? Absolutely. Yeah. Sheila, you, um, you did a lovely article um, um, after yeah. she died last year, which uh, makes a lot of points uh, about, about her and about her influence and about uh, how she uh, sort of... And, and I, I think it also has to be said, Patricia Scanlon, kind of mother hen a lot of the new writers. <laughs> and, uh, but I mean that in the best possible way. But you, 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 you go to great pains in the article to point out um, that she's remembered for a lot of things, but there are things that she never got the credit for, or didn't get as much credit for as she should have. For example, her mastery of the craft and the fact that she made it look so easy that she would never actually be, uh, she didn't get an awful lot of what you would call high literary uh, praise. No, and I think, I think the thing about it is, and Maeve described herself as a storyteller, and that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to bring the story out. She brought an awful lot of herself into the story. Mm. Um, and because of that, because the stories were as warm as she was, and as generous as she was, and as chatty as she was, um, people often didn't look behind uh, at how the story was constructed the and the mm. technique behind it. I think sometimes if you go to, to some of the literary festivals, you'll often hear people talking about um, the complexity of language and mm. things like that in, in the writing. And Maeve's book did not have com complexity of language. She had a simplicity of language, which in itself is so difficult to do in a book and bring, you know, bring all, of, all of the things that you want to bring out in a book in such a beautiful, simple language, and you know, simple is not is not used in the derogatory sense. Mm. Simple is used sure. in in its br making something so beautiful and so well crafted. And I think she also dealt with very complex mm. plot lines, mm -hmm. brought all the characters in, m never let you, f uh, never left you thinking, 
oh God, who is that again? Mm. You always knew who everybody was. Everybody had their had, had their place. Um, so she she was actually a really good technical writer. But you know, people don't look at that because they just get involved in the story. The uh, the the sort of the it, it's it's amazing actually when you think about Maid's legacy and uh, most people think of warmth and humanity, which is as much to do with her personality as it is to do with the actual writing. But they tend to forget that she she was a woman, as an Irish woman, as a professional Irish woman, she was at the forefront of Irish women's journalism. She yeah. fast the amount of writers she fostered when she was in the, in the Times and she was a woman's editor there. Yeah. And also the, the numbers of, I suppose, what you would now call feminist battles that she fought or that she allowed people under her care to fight and she encouraged to do so. It's quite extraordinary. So she made a very significant social impact for women, Sinead. Well, absolutely. And as, as Sheila said, I think sometimes she was underestimated for everything that she did achieve. And, you know, I think um, underneath her charm and her humour was quite a steely person, you know, because it, you don't le reach that level of success without a certain amount of, well, determination and, um, and tenacity and also hard work, you know, sheer hard work. And I just think that maybe sometimes we forget that, you know. Um, and she wasn't always well, and yet she can continue to write and and turn out the most beautiful books, you know. Mm. Sheila, one of the things that you've talked about before was the, the time when you uh, released your first book back in 1997. Maeve threw a party in her house for all of the female writers in Ireland. I know. Uh, she, this was just the most fantastic occasion and I still remember it really, really vividly. And um, what she, she did was she invited um, a lot of the new Irish writers, you know, and I would have been included in that. She also invited the, the female booksellers and people who are working in the book industry generally. And she invited us all out to this party in her house. And we all had to go in and you knew she was a teacher straight away. Yeah, <laughs> there was name tags. <laughs> yeah, so we had name tags <laughs> and we all had to introduce ourselves to each other and everything. <laughs> but it was the warmest, most wonderful, wonderful occasion. And um, I tootled out there with Patricia Scanlon, who lived nearby me, and we took the dart out of me. We said, oh, you came on the dart, isn't that great? You know, and you can have a drink now because you're on the dart. And indeed we did, and we ended up getting the dart back, and we had gone three stops in the wrong direction before <laughs> we realised that <laughs> Nave's hospitality. You obviously <laughs> had a good time. <laughs> but it was fantastic, and she made everybody so welcome, and she did talk about, you know, success and, and how you know, how everybody else's success lifted her spirits as well. And it was so inclusive and so charming and so lovely. Um, you know, I think that sometimes uh, a lot of the other literary, literary side of, of books could, could take a leaf from her mm. own book. She was just she so was, secure in herself and her own ability, you know, and that's I think. so fantastic, you know, because yeah. um, as Sinead was saying, she was very confident uh, in, in a lot of ways, or very determined in a lot of ways. Um, although I haven't said that, you know, sometimes we, we, we'd have a few words and she'd say, oh, my publishers are hoping that I'll sell as many as I did the last time or things. So that same insecurity was there, but my goodness, she was able to deal with it so well. Okay, sure. very quickly, uh, Sinead, for anybody who wants to, uh, to go along, what do they do? Just come along. It's it's free. Um, it's at one o'clock, Smock Alley, on Saturday. And you know we'd love people to come along. I think it'll be great fun. As I said, it's myself, Sheila, and Patricia, and we're just going to have a general chat. And you know, audience participation most welcome. Lovely tribute. Okay. Yeah. Thank now, you very much. Thank you very much. Now, as we've been discussing, uh, this month's Board Gosh Energy Book Club choice is A Week in Winter by Mae Binchy. And if you'd like to be in with the chance of winning a fantastic Blackberry Playbook, well, what you do is you send us in a 50-word review of a week in winter. Maeve would say, make it take 50 words just to say hello. I mean, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> want to get it done. Good luck with that. Anyway, no, indeed, no later than Friday, November 23rd is the uh, cut-off date for that. And those reviews should be emailed to Ireland AM at TV3 or sent by post to the Board Gosh Energy Book Club, TV3, Westgate Business Park, Ballymount, Dublin 24. You can also enter through our website, tv3.ie forward slash book club. Lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club.